share with you some Christmas table inspiration, some hacks of really cool ways of bringing in some theming and styling into your home without spending fortune. Some of it, most of it, um, in fact, you've probably already got around the house, um, but you can just use it in a unique and different way. Um, and uh, just give you some inspiration that hopefully you'll take away with you and, um, and implement in your, own, in your own homes. So before I get into the, the actual table, I just want to share with you some ideas for how uh, you can also bring Christmas into your home um, beyond the tree. So um, first things first, you'll see I've got a hook um, up behind you here, that's one of those sort of command removable hooks, um, so once you put it up you can still peel it off ceilings and walls and stuff and it doesn't leave a mark, so um, I've just got one of those up and I've got um, this amazing little deer head, um, these are from my website actually, osocal.com, um, but it might be that you've already got something like this in your home, it might be that you've got a Christmas wreath um, that you want to put inside instead of outside, um, maybe you've had some really nice Christmas cards that you've been given in the past, but actually they're too nice to throw away so you've still got them, what you could do is put them in a frame um, and hang them up on the wall, um, it might be that you've got some empty, some sort of blank, you know the little blank um, kind of green Christmas wreaths that you get and you can sort of style them yourselves, you can maybe wrap some battery operated fairy lights around, uh, loads and loads of different opportunities for that. So. Have a think about your walls. So if you've got pictures that are hung up near where your Christmas tree is, or you sit at a dining table and you've got hooks or pictures behind the dining table, just have a think about how you can bring Christmas to, to the walls. Uh, it doesn't necessarily just have to be to the tree and the table. So that's the first little tip. One of the other things that you could put um, up there, but I'm actually going to use them in a different way, um, are these little wreaths. So um, these are on my website. They're, they come as either kits, that you can uh, make yourself with the children. They're really easy to make, sort of unlike the, the fresh ones that you get where it takes quite a lot of time to put all the foliage and everything together. These are great ones to do as a family because they don't take very long. Uh, so you can get them as a kit or I'm selling them um, ready-made as well if you, if you like those. They're feed to and there's a, an antler design as well for those of you that quite like the sort of rustic Scandi design. So there's this cute little, little squirrel here and then there's the prancing reindeer. And like I said, you could put it up um, on a hook um, in, your, uh, in your home. If you've got a porch, you could hang it up on the porch because um, these aren't really suitable for outdoors, outdoors. Um, but what I'm actually gonna do, which is another way of bringing Christmas into your home yourself, uh, is if you've got dining chairs that have got this uh, bridge across the back, you can hang anything off it. So I'm going to hang these off here. The other idea if, you, if you've got solid back is that you basically have a piece of ribbon that you tie around the back and tie in a bow here and then you can basically suspend anything off it. So I'm going to, I'm going to tie these on here because I think they look quite nice there. But if you haven't got wreaths, um, just tying a little cluster of mistletoe, you could... Uh, hang some baubles off the back of the chair and just have a really nice bow with a cascading ribbon going either side. Again, just a really another different way of bringing Christmas into your home that maybe you might not have thought of before. Um, so that's these two. Um, another thing is bringing Christmas to your sofa. So uh, I got a collection of Christmas cushion covers on my website, which I'm going to share with you. They're all in standard sizes. Um, so this is one of the Christmas houses and the reason that I've decided to stock just Christmas cushion covers is because instead of spending a fortune on a Christmas, cu Christmas cushion that is only going to last a few weeks, actually you can spend a lot less on a cushion cover, which is what I've got, and then you've, I've ordered them all in standard sizes so that you can basically just put them over the top of your existing cushions. So these are like 45 centimetres each, which is the standard size for a cushion. So you chances are you've got those at home anyway. Um, so there's a selection of different ones here. And then a couple of other ones. There's this really cute 
snowflake design. And this gold foil wreath design as well. Now, if you don't want to spend loads of money on additional things like that, a really easy way of bringing Christmas to existing cushions and cushion covers is, so I've got crepe paper because I've somehow managed to lose my ribbon stock um, somewhere upstairs, um, but just so you get the idea, so I've got some crepe paper here, this would break if you sat against it, so I'd recommend ribbon, but what you can basically do is tie up your cushion like you would a present. So you basically turn your cushion cover into a Christmas present. And what you can do is basically choose the ribbon in the same colours that match your theme. And then it's just another really, really easy way of bringing Christmas to another area of your home. So you get the idea with that. So do that with a ribbon. Uh, you can have two next to each other on the bed. If you've got gas stain, if you want to do it for yourself, just to bring a bit of cosy Christmas to your bedrooms, you can put it on the sofa. Uh, you can put them on the back of dining chairs like I've done here. Um, and again, it's just a really another easy way uh, of bringing Christmas somewhere different. Now, just quickly going conventional before I move on to the, um, the table. Um, I, in, on my uh, website, I've also got a collection of Christmas decorations. So, I don't know about you, but um, unless you're going somewhere like Harrods or John Lewis and spending like 10, 20 pounds per decoration. I personally haven't found that many pastel coloured um, Christmas decorations. Everything is still quite traditional. As you can tell by my home, I'm, I'm kind of all about pastels and, and not traditional um, in the sort of conventional red and green route. So I've stocked some really cute little decorations on my site, um, which I'll just quickly share with you. So I've got a selection of little angels and that was the other thing. I really, I don't know about you, but apart from the little stars with the, um, the, the wire bottom so that you stick on top and then they end up just going all over the shop. I actually haven't found that very many nice, um, all sort of unique things to go on the top of the tree. Um, so actually this, if you've got a really, really big tree, you could actually have that at the top of the tree um, instead of your conventional star. Um, or these uh, really cute little angels, which I'll share with you. So there's this one here, um, which is, she's got a little fluffy dress on, gold wings, a bit of fluffy sort of scarf around her neck, and this like, really lovely like twine hair and legs. So I've got those um, there, which I'm gonna sit back at the top. And then these, there's three different design colors of these. Uh, you can buy them individually, or I've done a deal if you buy um, three. Are these cute little things? So they've basically got just the most adorable little zhuzhi dresses, a fluffy hat, uh, a little pearl detail on the front, just really, really cute. My girls love these. Um, so there's a white one. There's a pink one. Uh, and there's a grey one, so they're really super cute. So you can put them on the tree. Um, again, you could do other things with them, like hang them off here, um, off dining chairs. You could um, you could actually use them in your present wrapping if you're going to go down the eco route this year of using brown paper. What you could do is just keep it all completely plain, and then this little hook here you could use to tie onto the present with a bit of ribbon, so you could actually just really go for a statement bit of gift wrapping by giving somebody that and then they can keep it afterwards. Uh, you could actually have them on your table, maybe you could lie them down like that. On place settings, you could use the, the hook to put people's names on it and have it, have it as their, their sort of name tag. So lots of different ways that you can use these up over the, uh, as well as this conventional way of putting them on the tree. Uh, these little angel wings 
come in packs of five and that you can see how big they are, they're about the size of my hands, they're quite a decent size, they're super cute, again, place settings, uh, gift wrapping on the tree, they look really good against green trees because they show up so well. So you've got those, and actually what you could do is put some string through that um, and then have them all lined up and you could have them as a garland, uh, that would look really nice, like over a half or a fireplace. Uh, thinking about it. And then I've got these little cute wooden angels. They come in packs of uh, six, I think, and there's like a, a three peachy ones, three pinky ones, uh, and they've just got these like really rustic little wings, all wooden uh, little pegs. And again, you could actually take the string off here and you could stand those up um, on a table. You could have them going across a sideboard across a fireplace uh, you can have them as your place settings so many so many different little ways or maybe little shelves if you've got shelves uh, lots of really cute ways of using those so put those back on my tree there you go so that's some decorations now onto the table so uh, i don't know about you but i really like the effect that a table runner has um, it really grounds the space, it, um, it pulls a theme together, it gives you really good styling opportunities down the middle without things looking just plonked. So um, a real hack for you guys, uh, which I use all the time, which costs nothing or you've already spent the money, is using wallpaper. So if you've got a roll of wallpaper left over in your cupboard somewhere, or you happen to go to home base and you like some wallpaper but you, you're not really sure if you want to buy it or not and then you end up taking a, a length away with you. Basically that. Um, so I picked up these from our local home base actually. So there's this wallpaper which is like a textured, actually I think this, I think this might be in the range actually, a uh, textured wallpaper um, in like a goldy colour with loads of different tones to it. Um, I also picked up this grey chevron design, if you sort of, if you like the sort of silvers and greys, um, there's that one. And obviously, you know, you know yourself how many wallpaper um, options there are nowadays. And um, so, just another way of using them. And then you can just roll them up and keep them in a cupboard. You could maybe use it for something else, for scrap paper or however else you normally use them. But really, really good and inexpensive, if not free way of uh, styling your table. So I'm going to use this gold one today, along here. And then, obviously, as you know, the wallpaper sample, uh, wallpaper widths that they are quite wide. So what I'd quite like to do is layer this up. And layering is something that is a really good thing to do in any any of your styling. Uh, if you're uh, styling a coffee table or a bookcase. Uh, instead of plonking individual things on it, it's really good to layer a group. So it might be that you stack up a series of books um, and then you put a vase on top or a candle. Actually, that's a, a, a lot more uh, design-led um, than maybe just plonking the vase or the candle on the table. So that's a really good tip. Um, and I'm going to do that. I'm going to use that principle with this. So the wide uh, table runner, which uh, was me, I think. And then in onosopel.com, I've got some uh, table runners because I, I just love these for parties, dinner parties. If you want to hang them on the back of a sofa or down off the arm of a sofa, they're just or at the end of a bed. Runners are so versatile, so that's why I've chosen to stock them. So I've got really lovely crushed velvet. Uh, dusky pink runner, which is so luxurious. It's so thick. All of them are super long um, because I've done that on purpose to see any, any table will go across any bed. Um, and then you just fold them accordingly. So I've got the, the dusky pink. Uh, this one is a copper sequin, as you can tell. They've got tiny, tiny little sequins. So rather than being really brash and sort of huge, huge sequins, they're really, really dainty, so they, they catch the light really nicely. So I've got that copper one. Uh, and then this one, which I'm going to use today, is, a, is the same as the copper one, uh, just white. So it's got those tiny, tiny little beads, um, sequins on there, sewn on. Um, and it's super long, so I've actually folded mine in half already. 
to go across the table. And as you'll see, uh, again, because you don't want to spend loads of money on a runner and just use it once a year, is they're all completely versatile in, um, in style and colour. So all of those would go for your afternoon tea in the summer, you could go for an autumn tablescape, it could be a birthday party, or it could be Christmas, New Year. You don't just get it out once a year. Um, you can use them loads and loads, which is what I do. So this is my sequined table runner. I'm going to come around and see um, if anyone's joined us yet. If you've got any comments, put them below and I can always answer them. So let me just kind of have a little look while I'm building that part. Uh, morning, Emily. Morning, Catherine. I hope you're enjoying my bit of festive zhuzh this morning. Right, so now we've got table. Now what I'm going to do is put the chargers down. Now I've got these, which are pretty chunky and pretty hefty from Donnell. They're um, clear glass with a uh, gold rim. Um, I've got, I got these from a job recently, so that's why I've got these. But in Poundland, you can basically buy similar size chargers. Um, they are literally a pound, I think, per for each one. Um, and you can buy them in gold, you can buy them in, I think, black, silver, um, absolute bargain. So you can get them in Poundland or um, other places as well. Uh, so I'm going to put that charger down there. Now, rather than just having an empty plate or your kind of your bigger plate and then your smaller plate, again, it's another really good styling opportunity and also just a way of making your dinners and your place settings really memorable and you have people coming over, which obviously we can't at the moment, but, um, you know, or if you've got, if you're having your lovely family Christmas and you want it to just feel really special and really memorable, there's tiny little things you can do that just give it that edge of feeling extra special. So on, um, on here, I'm going to place these. So this... is a burlap cutlery pocket. So it's basically burlap that has got a pocket across here for you to put your cutlery in. And then um, you can style it in any way you want. So these are on ocicl.com as well, the pockets. Um, they come blank and then you can basically, again, same way as the ones, you can use them all year round by just choosing how you style the front part. So I've just basically tied a winter flower um, to the front with some twine. Um, which I'm going to place on here. But what you, for other options uh, for Christmas, you can tie some of those little mini baubles that you get. So you can tie some ribbon rounds and then you can tie the little mini baubles onto the front. They look super cute. Um, if you're going down a quite a rustic, natural look, um, you can put little sprigs of rosemary, and I don't know if you've seen it, but if you actually have got this rosemary here, I can show you. I don't know if you've seen it, but basically what you can do is you can bend these around like this and tie them here, and then you can basically make mini Christmas wreaths out of sprigs of rosemary. So that would be really nice if you then tied it, had a little bow coming off here, um, and then you placed it on your setting there. That would be really, really cute. Um, and again, what you could do is put a tiny little bit of card coming off it with people's names and you can personalise them. So I've got the charges there. Now, one little extra bit I've got to go on here. In Home Bargains, um, you can buy, they're so cute! You can buy these tiny little candy canes. So you can get the big ones in Home Bargains and Poundland and other places as well. Um, but you can also buy these tiny little ones in boxes in um, Home Bargains and I just think they're super cute. I love using candy canes at Christmas. There's so many opportunities for using them as well as the kids eating them at the end. So I am also going to slot a little candy cane in each one. It just brings a little bit of colour to the scheme as well. I'm not introducing a huge amount of colour today because I'm going for quite a neutral vibe, but uh, just quite a cute way of uh, introducing just a tiny, tiny pop of colour and a bit of traditional Christmas. Now, along the candy canes line, Check out these bad boys. So, this is a coupe champagne glass from Ikea. 
Um, and obviously you can, you can put it on the table, you can put your serviettes coming out of the glasses, uh, or what you could do, as well as hanging these little candy canes off the glasses because they hang really, really nicely, you could just do that. Or on my website, I'm also selling um, these. And what they are is they're, they're plastic, um, but they're fillable um, baubles. And what I do every year is I actually fill them with cocktails, put, gla um, put ice in the bottom, plonk these on the ice. So you could basically fill that with Baileys, um, you could fill it with milk for the kids, you could put your own little cocktail in it. Actually, another thing I've done, if you want to Google Osocal mint chocolate cocktail, I think, um, if you get Baileys and then you get creme de menthe, the like green liqueur, if you mix the two together, you not only get this amazing mint green coloured drink, um, but you get a mint chocolate Baileys as well. Like to me, that's an absolute win. So what you can do is you can basically make a jug up of all of that, fill the cock, fill the baubles with the cocktail, put the lid back on, plop them on a, a little bit of ice in the glass. How lush is that? If you're having a little soiree, not at the moment, I know, but if you're having a little soiree and your guests arrive and you're, they're greeted with that, or you get your, your guests to, and your family to sit down at table um, and they've got those in front of them, again, it's just another extra way of something feeling really, really special. So I've kept two plain, um, and then just so you can see, the, um, the other two I've just tied a little bit of the twirly ribbon on there, uh, just for an extra bit of colour and a bit of detail. So again, um, what you can do is use ribbon that matches your theme. Uh, and again, if you're doing place names, you could tie little tags off the tops of the baubles and you could have people's names coming off them. Other thing you can do with these, thinking about it, which I haven't done yet, I've only just thought this, is actually what you could do is fill up the drinks with, fill up the baubles with the drinks. You could, if you've got a Christmas tree near your table or if you're having a party and you haven't got a table, what we could do is actually hang them off the tree and then people basically go to the tree, help themselves to a bauble with the drink in it, and then pour it into their glass. That's a really cute idea, which I've not thought of until now. So really versatile um, options for those. And yeah, like I said, they're on my website now. I listed those last night. Okay, so we've got the place settings. We've got the drinks. Now, centerpiece. Loads of different options for this. And I've got a couple of hacks for you and um, a couple of other options. So listed on my website last night is this amazing box. It's, it's a versatile box, it's acrylic, so it's not breakable. And there's three compartments to it which you can use in loads and loads of different ways. So there's a lid to it. And there's also on its own, and there's also a layer, which is which needs a wash because I've used it at Halloween. Apologies for that. Um, and which has got 16 holes in it. Um, so, ways you can use this, which is a great Christmas present um, for, um, for people who are homemakers, is, right, I'll tell you the options for this first. Have it on its own, fill it with punch, put your punch ladle in there, have it as a, a punch bowl. Turn it upside down the other way, which I'm gonna do in a moment, and use it as a cake stand. You can use this layer on its own and put cake pops and makeup brushes and canopy sticks on that, or just use it as an extra serving tray. Or you can put it inside and use it for flower arranging to make an epic centerpiece which I've done and I've got on our coffee table upstairs, so I've brought it down to show you. So the white flowers I'm selling on my website, um, as I am, I am with the dried flowers. So basically I've just used the holes to put the flower heads through, so it just really keeps it sturdy and in place, and then I've styled the bottom bit according to our theme, so I've put the dried flowers from my website in it, but you could put artificial snow, you could fill it with baubles, especially if you've got artificial flowers and there's no water in it. Um, so that's another way of using it. 
And then, last but not least, is the lid. So, if you've got your centrepiece or you've got cake, um, and you're using the other bit of the cake stand, you can have it that way. You can put candles on it. Uh, you could put tiny little bud vases. You could put uh, cupcakes, canapes. You could have it that way round and have cupcakes and canapes on it. Just another really easy way of styling one box. Or you can have it that way, have your jewellery in it. And your nail varnishes and then have that next to it with your makeup brushes. And then have the clear one next to it on your dressing table with all your makeup in it so that you can see it at the bottom. So many ways you can use that. So today, I'm going to use it this way round. Because I'm going to use it as a cake stand. But rather than keeping it blank inside, I've got some bits of snow on here. And I'm going to put some in here. So just a bag of moss and some twigs, artificial snow, baubles, some fairies. Uh, you could go and collect some leaves and some pine cones and you could spray them. Literally, so many chance choices with that. And then what I'm going to do as well is I've got some battery operated fairy lights, which hopefully work. Uh, and I'm going to put those in there as well and hide the battery bit underneath the foliage like that. I'm going to plonk the box on the top like that and put that in the middle. Now that already looks pretty, pretty cool and then what you could do is uh, you could put, you could have your drinks on it. You could have um, a little vase of flowers. You could put a wreath on it with a candle. So many opportunities, but I'm going to use it for a cake stand today. Because I'm going to show you how to make a really easy Christmas cake uh, decoration. So, I've got uh, a basic Christmas cake here. So I bought this in uh, Sainsbury's. You can get them in Waitrose as well. And you can basically get either a Victoria sponge or a Christmas cake, and it just comes ready iced and it's completely blank. So I've used the same ribbon as I've used on the wreaths along here, and then I've just used little pins to pin them. And then, from my website, I've got these really adorable little cake toppers. So on one side they're gold, and then you flip them round, and then on the other side they're silver. Or you can have them as matte gold and blue if you don't peel the acrylic, um, the protector off. And then I've got a third one, which is a Merry Christmas cake topper. And they are acrylic, so they're wipeable. You can use them year on year. Once you've bought them once, you only have to, use, you only have to buy them the once. So I'm going to make a little Christmas scene. Here and maybe there. I can't see the Christmas on that, so go that way. Like that. And then, uh, what you can do, even if you haven't got these, uh, you can do this. You can make a little forest out of rosemary. So you just basically cut the rosemary to size. And then you turn them upside down, you get a little stalk at the bottom, and you can make a little winter forest. And then if you've got some icing sugar, you could sieve icing sugar over the top first to make it look snowy. You could yeah, have all the sort of snowy bits there, and then have a few bits on the top, like just so many opportunities, but basically ways of decorating a cake without having to make all the icing bits and all the 
the intricate bits and pieces. So that's a really, really easy way. And rather than it just being plonked on the table, you can see how it elevates it by putting it on the box. I mean, you could just do that with a normal cake stand and you could sprinkle all of that underneath. Um, but I definitely think having that height makes it more of a, a centerpiece. So that's that. Um, and then I'm gonna go and get the, another lid. Another lid, I'm just gonna show you another way of using it. So this is a two pounds 50 Ikea vase. As you can see, the shape of it looks quite bell-like. So if you turn it upside down, you're basically getting a glass cloche that normally costs probably about 12, 15 quid for two pounds 50. And then if you've got a base that you can put it on, I'm gonna use this just to show you how, how else you can use the lid, but you could put it on um, a, a log. You know, you sort of get the log placemats. Uh, you could put it on um, a, 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 a cork board. You could put it on like a round chopping board or a plate. Uh, I'm going to put it on that today. And what I'm going to do is just show you how else you could make a centerpiece. And I'll put it on the top. In fact, try to swap it over now and put this at the end here. And you can see how else you can use this. So I'm going to plug that on the top. And then I'm going to put this here. And then in the same way that I've just done, I'm going to fill the cloche up with some bits. And then in the same way that I've just done with the fairy lights, you could basically put the fairy lights inside the cloche and you could have exactly the same effect that you've got in the box in the cloche, I have got this which I'm going to use. So this is a cute little ceramic um, tea light holder. Um, I think I got this one from maybe Poundland. Yeah, I think Poundland. Uh, I know Wilco is selling them at the moment. I'm going to pop that inside there and I'm going to have a little winter house scene. There. Put it that way actually because then you can see the, the cones and everything. Yeah, like that. And then, whereas with a cloche, you'd normally get um, a glass holder, like the little knobs on the top, you can either glue, uh, you could glue like a knob on the top if you've got one left over from a cupboard or something, you could glue that on the top, or you could, if you're going to be on theme, you could put something like that on there, like that. And then the reason I put that off centre, you can obviously put it central and have it as like one complete um, style and one complete design. But because this is quite big in comparison to this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these and involve these in the design. So again, these are from my website. Uh, aren't they cute? They're like textures, so they're sort of fluffy. Uh, these little deer with gold sparkly antlers and hooves, they're just adorable. So I'm actually going to put him on there like that and then I've got a couple of other ones which then I can just dot on the table like that and it's almost like because you've got the gold sparkly base it's almost like you've got the um, the snow effect already under their feet so I'm nearly there with it um, just a couple of other bits um, these flowers you can get on my website uh, I think there's one, two, three, there's five stems per each one. So if you were doing a tablescape of four, instead of having the, uh, the wooden flowers on the place settings, what you could do is you could cut these off and you could put those together with some ribbon and have some little Christmas feathers or some little twigs uh, coming off there. Or I think you'd probably need about six sprigs of these to create this for your coffee table or if you were going to have that as a Christmas centrepiece, what you could do is you can have that here as your Christmas centrepiece. You could take out all of the pink, just have white, and then you could have Christmas feathers, you could have the sparkly uh, twigs, you could get some forage, some twigs and spray them or keep them natural, have them hanging off. You could put some little baubles in, the, in across the top. Um, and then some little ones along the bottom and actually have a flower centerpiece. So 
another, uh, another option for uh, centrepieces or your coffee table. Um, yeah, so many, so many opportunities with that. And then what I've decided to do is offer a Christmas table in a box. Um, so um, on my website, I've basically grouped things that I think you need for a, a successful tablescape, but also a versatile one that you can use year round on there. So in the Christmas in a box, you've got the white sequined table runner. You've got the clear acrylic box with the lid and then the compartment that goes inside. Um, so for that versatile use that I've just been talking about. And you get a pack of six um, burlap cutlery pockets as well. So um, something that you can use it all year round, theme up accordingly, but obviously great for Christmas as well, as I've shown you today. Um, and then if you buy that as a box, it's a lot cheaper than buying the, the bits individually. So there we have it, Christmas.